painted, mounted, balanced. Dorothy's got some new shoes. So as I mentioned at the end of my last video, I'm going to try to get the tires on myself. Not balance them obviously, but you got to put tire stems in first before you put the tubes in. So I need a couple things for this. This is a uh, stem tool. It's got the part where you can take the stem out, the, the internal valve out, and it also has a part where you can thread on. So remove the cap. I'm going to lubricate this up with some Silglide. Don't need a whole lot. Put it through the hole. Thread tool on. So that gives you a nice purchase there for it. I'm just going to use two fingers to grab here and just kind of wiggle it as you move. a little bit but it's not too bad and then this is what it looks like on the back Got all the tires mounted with the tire irons. Believe it or not, wasn't actually too bad. Set all the beads. The um, they look real good. I like it. I didn't clean the white balls up yet. I do need to get them balanced. So unless they incidentally got cleaned with the soap and water from from mounting them. Now what I'm going to do? I'm going to put back of the car down. I got Harbor Freight jacks under there. No, that's not an oil leak. You see, Harbor Freight jacks under there. So I want to get them out of there um, so I can trade them in because they got a recall on them. So thanks Tim for reminding me of that. What the car's gonna look like with white walls and white tires, or white wheels. Got the glove boxes here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to hook this up. And uh, it's just a cardboard one by the, the Newton commercial guys. Same guys that made the carpet and all that. And there's uh, a lot of attachment points up here on this thing, inside here, and then the two in the back. You know, it's kind of dark in there, blocking the light. But I'll go ahead and see if I can't get this. Now, one of my Viewers, Hayib told me that this goes like this to provide a little bit of a lip so stuff doesn't come flying out of the glove box on you. So I will put it in that way. didn't go too bad um, I got to sneak this behind there you go that was easy this flap kind of hangs down here and just kind of rests I don't know how else that would work there's no screw or anything up at the top that I could find and then in here this screw in here I had to use a spire clip for that I didn't show you that and then I don't the black screws that I have are not long enough with a double layer of cardboard and then into this thing. And believe it or not, I don't have any screws laying around that are long enough. 
even to kind of get it started. So that's uh, going to be tricky to get at as well, just because of how it's located. I can't get a screwdriver back there. So the driver's side I'm going to wait on because I have a bunch of wiring that is interfering with that and I'm not quite mentally prepared to do that tonight. So I'm going to leave that. But I've got my tires in the trunk. So tomorrow, if all goes to plan, I'll take that to a, a tire place near me and get them to balance the things. So I think that's going to do it for me for the evening. And uh, I'll see you, see you in the next visit. All right, welcome back, everybody. I got the wheels back from balancing yesterday. A couple of them uh, actually don't have any weights on the front, which is kind of nice. But I'm going to go ahead and put them on, probably thin slot in the front and the fat slot in the back just because I don't really have any other idea how to do it. So I'll get these put on real quick, get the car back onto the uh, the rollers there and get it off these jack stands. Got the tires on. Unfortunately, the, uh, the jack is not here and the trailer that is normally out front isn't here either, which means the garage mates probably found another 240Z or something. They're on there, I'll, I'll either run home and get my own jack or, or something like that, but, uh, but they're there. What I have here is a matched key lock kit picked up from spit bits comes with the ignition tumbler this is the rear deck lid the boot lid tumbler and then the two door locks not real cheap it's about 75 bucks unfortunately is that but spit bits was the only per the only uh, shop that i could find that really had them and prevented me from having to break into these and set the tumblers myself and all that kind of stuff you can do that but it just didn't look like it was going to be real fun this is an old ignition switch, I think from the black car. So I pulled the, uh, the tumbler out of that. Now the way that this works is if you can see that little itty bitty brass plug there, that's spring loaded. So you can push that in and that slides in. When you put the tumbler in, that slides in and there's a little hole that's accessible through, through here and you stick the, you can stick a, a, a can't even remember what this thing is called, a little, a long pointy thing, stick that in there, and if you can see in the inside there where that kind of comes up, but you compress that pin there and that, then you can slide it out. Now the way that the lock works is you can see these little itty bitty spades sticking out here, and they, will, they would also come out the bottom as well. These are spring loaded real itty bitty little springs in there when you put the key in a key that's correct you see that there's no nothing sticking out on the uh, the barrel itself it's smooth and then what that allows you to do is it allows it to rotate inside the hole there if the key does not match you can see that while it's all smooth on the top it's sticking out on the bottom there and that prevents you from rotating inside of here. Now, so, but now that I've got a matched key set, what I'll do is I'll be able to use that and uh, and replace the key. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the ignition out of the out of the car that's in there. I just wanted to make sure that that's really what that hole did before I uh, tried it on mine and broke something. So now I'll go ahead and pop that key out of there and then replace this tumbler in here. And then I'll have to get the hood latch, boot latch thing off. I'll show you how I do that when I get to that point. All right, so this is the boot lid handle. This one goes together a little bit differently. Point something out real quick. You can see that number stamped in there, that's 904. If you look at the old ignition tumbler, that's 942. Those are key numbers, I believe. So if you ever had to get a new set of keys or something like that for the car, you could know the number and, uh, and call Triumph, I guess, back in the day and get it from them. So the way that this appears to be done is there's a little dowel in here so I'm gonna to have to drive that dowel through I believe and that dowel will fit into this little groove here's the new one that dowel will fit into that little groove there and lock that in so I'm gonna go ahead and pay attention to the way this comes out in case it's got obviously you can see it's got a uh, only gonna go in one way probably so I gotta make sure of that but I'm just gonna take a little uh, little punch and the hammer and hopefully that that's hope that that's the uh, that's the way that it's gonna work All right, just a little tapered, uh, tapered dowel there. That should have grabbed that. Now I just got to figure out how to get this thing out of here. I right, got my old key here. All right, there you go. All sorts of stuff going on inside of this thing. 
So this is, uh, I pulled the, the back portion out. This is what connects to the actual clip. So that just kind of pushes in. You got another dowel pin in there. You also have this little guy and that fit into this hole here, into this slot. And you can see that that's got a groove in it on one side and I assume that that's where that fits in. So when the lock turns, that turns the whole thing. I'm not quite sure the point of that. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together and get it uh, get the lock in there and have at it. All right, now I get it. So when you put the lock in, the whole tumbler the whole tumbler turns, and when that turns, this piece rides on it and it forces it up. You know, actually locks the lock, so to speak. So that kind of just comes up, rises up a little bit. Probably should have been able to figure that out just by looking at it. But there you go. So unfortunately, what I failed to do was realize that this was sided. So now I got to go look at the, the latch back there and see if I can figure out how this is going to actually lock and if it matters which way this thing pokes out. I'm not sure. All right, so this is the little standoff or whatever you want to call it that comes off the car. And that fits it over that like that. And in there you've got grooves here and here. And that's where that lock will fall into when, when you actually lock it. So since there is two in there, it doesn't seem to matter which way it goes. So I'm just going to go ahead and reassemble it. All right, so we got this back together. And when I turn it, you can see that little thing sticks up. Turn it the other way. Lock and unlock. So when it's locked, like that. Unlocked, like that. And the whole thing rotates. And it's not, uh, since it's all circular, it doesn't really seem to matter which way it goes together. So you can see here that doesn't, I can't turn that collar because that thing's in there. But when I unlock it, it turns freely. So, pretty cool. Now I know how they work. Got the ignition in. That guy works. Put the key in the right way. One of these ways. I hate having the uh, tumbler upside down, but I don't have a choice with this. You can't, uh, can't rotate the key or the tumbler. But that works. And then right now the hatch is shut or locked. Put the key in. Whole tumbler rotates. And then you can pull the key out. And then it's unlocked. So this is a little, uh, it's a little temperamental. It doesn't always want to rotate. You got to kind of jiggle it a little bit, which, you know, it's fine. So there you go. So that's done. Now what I'm going to try to do, and I'm, I'm scared to do it, but I don't know that I have much of a choice. The antenna hole in this car, I believe they are from the factory about an inch wide. And I don't know if this one didn't come with an antenna or something, but somebody drilled a hole in here that wasn't uh, very circular. So I've got my step drill and I'm going to try to drill it out about an inch. And I've got this plug that is designed for that that's uh, just a little bit less than an inch, so I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do there. I obviously want this to grip. So I'll have to uh, go between the seven eighths and see if the seven eighths works for me. But hopefully I don't uh, you know, destroy the paint in that area. That's why I've got like three, four layers of tape there to try to keep the paint together, we'll see. Yeah, chipped it up a little bit, not too bad though. But at least the hole is circular. All right, got to keep going with it. All right, so that's should be seven eighths of an inch. And if looking at it, I think that's what this should fit. I'm afraid to go too much further, so we'll get too big. Ooh. But you know what I'm going to get, don't you? The orange stick. Cleaned up nice. That's, a, that's one of those finishing touches right there. Even though I'm not finished. I finished putting in the glove box on this side. I got longer screws like I had mentioned. I think these are a one inch screw as opposed to the, uh, the other one that I got. Which was half an inch, obviously, by looking at it. So it fits just fine, it's already in there. I just gotta get the uh, flat washer, lock washer, and nut on there. All right, this 
this uh, this hole over here is not lining up at all. I don't think I'm going to worry too much about it right now. I'm just going to leave it. It does the uh, ventilation duct there does kind of get in the way a little bit, but again, that's that's fine too. I still don't understand what's supposed to happen with this top pad unless it just sits in there. Anyway, there you go. Looks nice, nice finished look to it. I, I like it. Moving right along here, I got the driver's side box started. It's not in yet. I've got this piece that I've got to put in now. I've uh, waited until this time, one, because I wasn't real sure how it fit. So don't think I'm all smart in prior planning. But two, it, it does go in, in conjunction with the, the attachments here and here. Um, it goes in like this. So I'm gonna to try to manhandle that in there a little bit. I don't know how well this is gonna go, but we'll see. Got the box and the little uh, vanity plate or whatever that's called. Not real crazy about the way that's that it goes in, but that's the way that it goes in. And unfortunately, you can see that little gray half moon there, and that's the the hole that's in there. The only thing that didn't line up for me was this part here. This hole back here, I assume, should go with this one. And you notice that's slotted because the steering wheel is adjustable height-wise. So I assume that's why that's slotted, and I assume that it should line up with that hole. But it's not a uh, not even really close. So. I'm not sure that I'm even going to really do anything about that, though it does kind of stick out. I guess I could sneak it inside here, but I'm afraid I'm going to crease the, the cardboard and might have to take it all apart if I want to do that. But anyway, that came out all right. So now I'm going to, uh, I'm getting towards the end of the day here, I'm going to play with some rubbing issues that I think I have on the, on the bonnet and see if I can figure out what's going on there. But otherwise, uh, I think we're close to being done. One of the rubbing spots was the Brakeland clutch lines here we're rubbing against the the fender you can see the marks on that unfortunately so I just simply bent it uh, the other one I'm having is on the radiator valance this guy here you can see that big mark kind of sort of there and it's scraping just barely touching I can't really move the valance anymore so I think it's as much of a function of where the bonnet is front to back which I haven't done gaps yet. I keep avoiding that. I really need to get to them and, uh, and then anything else. So I'm going to uh, leave that one for now. Well, of course, now that I've got tires, I got to try out how the spare fits. Now, I do not have anything to hold the tire down itself. I'm going to have to either make something or come up, figure out how it was done. I don't even know that I've ever seen a picture of that. Doesn't fit real well. Of course, I guess because it's a little bit different size tire than original, but it's not lining up. As you can see over there, it's not lining up on the on the back. That's all right. Get my little cover here. So that will go on here. Kind of like that. Clean. Anyway, something like that. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. I promise. Next time, gaps. Have a good weekend. Stay healthy and stay safe. Cheers.